A water to boiler is a type of boiler in which water circulates in tubes heated externally by the fire. Fuel is burned inside the furnace, creating hot gas which heats water in the steam generating tubes. In smaller boilers, additional generating tubes are separate in the furnace, while larger utility boilers rely on the water filled tubes that make up the walls of the furnace to generate steam. The heated water then rises into the steam drum. Here, Saturated steam is drawn off the top of the drum. In some services, the steam will re enter the furnace through a superheater to become superheated. Superheated steam is defined as steam that is heated above the boiling point at a given pressure. Superheated steam is a dry gas and therefore used to drive turbines, since water droplets can severely damage turbine blades. Cool water at the bottom of the steam drum returns to the fed water drum via large bore down camera tubes where it preheats the fed water supply to increase economy of the boiler, exhaust gases are also used to preheat the air blown into the furnace and warm the fed water supply. Such water to boilers in thermal power stations are also called steam generating units. The older fire tube boiler design, in which the water surrounds the heat source and gases from combustion pass through tubes within the water space, is a much weaker structure and is rarely used for pressures above 2.4 mPa. A significant advantage of the water to boiler is that there is less chance of a catastrophic failure, there is not a large volume of water in the boiler nor are there large mechanical elements subject to failure. Applications, a Euro OE The ability of water to boilers to generate superheated steam makes these boilers particularly attractive in applications that require dry, high pressure, high energy steam, including steam turbine power generation a Euro. Owing to their superb working properties, the use of water to boilers is highly preferred in the following major areas, variety of process applications in industries, chemical processing divisions, pulp and paper manufacturing plants, refining units, besides, they are frequently employed in power generation plants where large quantities of steam having high pressures that is approximately 16 MPa and high temperatures reaching up to 550 degrees Celsius are generally required. For example, the Avampa Solar Power Station uses two Rentec Type D water to boilers. Equals stationary equals, modern boilers for power generation are almost entirely water tube designs, owing to their ability to operate at higher pressures. Where process steam is required for heating or as a chemical component, then there is still a small niche for fire tube boilers. Equals marine equals, their ability to work at higher pressures has led to marine boilers being almost entirely water tube. This change began around 1900, and traced the adoption of turbines for propulsion rather than reciprocating engines a euro although water to boilers were also used with reciprocating engines. Equals railway equals, there has been no significant adoption of water tube boilers for railway locomotives. A handful of experimental designs were produced, but none of these were successful or led to their widespread use. Most water tube railway locomotives, especially in Europe, use the Schmidt system. Most were compounds, and a few on eye flows. The Norfolk and Western Railway's John Henry was an exception, as it used a steam turbine combined with an electric transmission. LMS 6399 Fury, rebuilt completely after a fatal accident, LNER 10000 Hush Hush, using a Yarrow boiler, rather than Schmidt. Never successful and reboiled with a conventional boiler. Hybrids, a slightly more successful adoption was the use of hybrid water tube slash fire tube systems. As the hottest part of a locomotive boiler is the firebox, it was an effective design to use a water tube design here and a conventional fire tube boiler as an economizer in the usual position. One famous example of this was the USA Baldwin 4-10-2 No. 60,000, built in 1926. Operating as a compound at a boiler pressure of 2,400 kPa it covered over 160,000 km successfully. After a year though, it became clear that any economies were overwhelmed by the extra costs and it was retired to become a stationary plant. A series of 12 experimental locomotives were constructed at the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad's Mount Clare shops under the supervision of George H. Emerson, but none of them was replicated in any numbers. The only railway use of water tube boilers in any numbers was the Broughton boiler, 
invented in Austria in 1902 by Johann Broten and found in rare examples throughout Europe. Hungary, though, was a keen user and had around 1,000 of them. Like the Baldwin, this combined a water tube firebox with a fire tube barrel. The original characteristic of the Broten was a long steam drum running above the main barrel, making it resemble a flame and boiler in appearance. Equals road equals, while the traction engine was usually built using its locomotive boiler as its frame, other types of steam road vehicles such as lorries and cars have used a wide range of different boiler types. Road transport pioneers Goldsworthy Gurney and Walter Hancock both used water tube boilers in their steam carriages around 1830. Most under type wagons used water tube boilers. Many manufacturers used variants of the vertical cross tube boiler, including Atkinson, Clayton, Garrett, and Sentinel. Other types include the Clarkson thimble tube and the Fodino type wagon's pistol shaped boiler. Steam fire engine makers such as Merriweather usually used water tube boilers for their rapid steam raising capacity. Many steam cars used water tube boilers and the Bellsover Express Company even made a water tube replacement for the Stanley Steamer fire tube boiler. Design variations equals D-type boiler equals, the D-type is the most common type of small to medium-sized boilers, similar to the one shown in the schematic diagram. It is used in both stationary and marine applications. It consists of a large steam drum vertically connected to a smaller water drum via multiple steam generating tubes. These are surrounded by walls made up of larger water filled tubes, which make up the furnace. Equals M type boilers equals, the M type boilers were used in many USWWI warships, including hundreds of Fletcher class destroyers. Three sets of tubes form the shape of an M and create a separately fired superheater that allows better superheat temperature control. In addition to the mud drums shown on a D-type boiler, an M-type has a water screen header and a water wall header at the bottom of the two additional rows of vertical tubes and downcomers. Equals low water content equals, the low water content boiler has a lower and upper header connected by water tubes that are directly impinged upon from the burner. This is a furnace-less boiler that can generate steam and react quickly to changes in load. Equals Babcock and Wilcox boiler equals. Designed by the American firm of Babcock and Wilcox, this type has a single drum, with feed water drawn from the bottom of the drum into a header that supplies inclined water tubes. The water tubes supply steam back into the top of the drum. Furnaces are located below the tubes and drum. This type of boiler was used by the Royal Navy's Leander class frigates. Foster Wheeler, Combustion Engineering. Equals Stirling Boiler equals. The Stirling Boiler has near vertical, almost straight water tubes that zigzag between a number of steam and water drums. Usually there are three banks of tubes in a four drum layout, but certain applications use variations designed with a different number of drums and banks. They are mainly used as stationary boilers owing to their large size, although the large great area does also encourage their ability to burn a wide range of fuels. Originally coal-fired in power stations, they also became widespread in industries that produced combustible waste and required processed steam. Paper pulp mills could burn waste bach, sugar refineries their gas waste. It is a horizontal type of boiler. Equals Yarrow equals. Named after its designers, the then popular based Yarrow shipbuilders, this type has three drums in a delta formation connected by water tubes. The drums are linked by straight water tubes, allowing easy tube cleaning. This does, however, mean that the tubes enter the drums at varying angles, a more difficult joint to cork. Outside the firebox, a pair of cold leg pipes between each drum act as downcomers. Due to its three drums, the Yarrow boiler has a greater water capacity. Hence, this type is usually used in older marine boiler applications. Its compact size made it attractive for use in transportable power generation units during World War II. In order to make it transportable, the boiler and its auxiliary equipment, turbines, and condensers were mounted on wagons to be transported by rail. Equals White Forster equals, the White Forster type is similar to the Yarrow, but with tubes that are gradually curved. This makes their entry into the drums perpendicular, 
thus simpler to make a reliable seal. Equals Thornycroft equals. Designed by the shipbuilder John I. Thornycroft and Company, the Thornycroft type features a single steam drum with two sets of water tubes either side of the furnace. These tubes, especially the central set, have sharp curves. Apart from obvious difficulties in cleaning them, this may also give rise to bending forces as the tubes warm up, tending to pull them loose from the tube plate and creating a leak. There are two furnaces, venting into a common exhaust giving the boiler a wide base tapering profile. Equals forced circulation boiler equals, in a forced circulation boiler, a pump is added to speed up the flow of water through the tubes. Equals other types equals, O type, A type, flex tube boiler, M type control superheater. See also, three drum boiler, Clarkson thimble tube boiler, corner tube boiler, internally rifle boiler tubes. References External links, Robertson, Leslie Stephen Water Tube Boilers. Based on a short course of lectures delivered at University College, London from the Internet Archive.